A new school year is upon us. The freshly waxed hallway floors are ready for busy feet, and classrooms everywhere just buzzing with anticipation. Summer is over. For teachers, this transition marks the beginning of our official new year. But let me tell you, there is no tired like a first week back to school tired. It can be emotionally and physically taxing. As a teacher, I'm standing at the door of my grade one classroom and they're crying. They have no concept of waiting for a turn. Some could be extremely impulsive and they don't listen. And I haven't even gone in yet. That's just the parents I'm describing. <laughs> the word multitasking doesn't do justice to a feat a primary teacher undertakes. As soon as you begin to help one student, there is an overwhelming swarm of little people asking you to tie their shoes, sharpen their pencils, oh, and get them a Band-Aid for a cut that isn't even visible to the naked eye. By their very nature, children feel the need to just share everything that pops into their consciousness. It's very hard to teach anything when you're constantly interrupted with, oh, I lost a tooth, or, hey, Miss Rollo, is SpongeBob cheese? Could he be in the food group? <laughs> no, SpongeBob is a sea sponge, sweetheart. Or my personal favorite, Miss Rollo, guess what? My dad vacuumed the hamster last night. <laughs> Don't worry, he lived. And whatever you do, never get me started on bodily fluids, okay? That's a whole different TEDx talk in itself. <laughs> but despite the drawbacks and job hazards, there are many reasons why I chose this profession. I know that what we do every day is the key to a better life for every child and sets the foundation for a healthy, dynamic society with sustained economic growth. Teachers change lives. Then those lives go on to change other lives. I know this because it happened to my family. My grandmother lost her mom when she was very young. She was forced to quit school to take care of her 13 siblings, all while navigating the daily challenges of living in extreme poverty. Later in life, she married and raised 11 children of her own, including one with cerebral palsy. They all lived in a 1,000 square foot, three bedroom farmhouse with no insulation on a piece of land they rented on the unforgiving Saskatchewan Prairie. Imagine, there was no electricity, no indoor water or plumbing, and just an oil furnace and wood stove as their heat source. My mother remembers going to bed at night and, and watching her breath, or would wake up to the feeling of my grandmother plucking bed bugs off her legs with tweezers before going to school. Their washroom, was a 10-gallon bucket in a small closet room. The community that they belonged to would feel pity on my grandmother, stating that her children will never amount to anything in life. Well, it turns out they underestimated my grandma. She had a plan of her own. She knew education was the ticket to a different life she wanted for her children. She transformed that small living room space into a schoolroom. She learned chemistry, algebra, and physics alongside her children so she could help them with their homework, projects, and exams. 10 out of 11 of those children went to post-secondary education. Six of them became teachers, including my amazing mom, a retiree of over 42 great years of teaching. My mom firmly believes that education was their success story and that it saved her life. She's been quoted in saying that education is a courageous combination of skill, art, and science, where teachers write the story of the future. Now, what is so true about that is that recent research in the science of human development shares the same optimistic story. It tells a beautiful story that no matter where a child's starting point is, Healthy development is possible if it is intentionally encouraged in the relationships and experiences they have. You see, children can't build strong brains by themselves. 
They need positive nurturing interactions with strong targeted learning experience to support healthy development. That's what teachers do every day. Recent advances of our understanding of the brain have arisen from the convergence of research, primarily neuroscience, biology, and psychology. The old idea that a brain arrives on the planet hardwired by genetics was rapidly replaced by the realization that brains are built through experiences. We are marvels of adaptability and change. You may have heard the principle of neuroscience that says, neurons that fire together, wire together. Well, educators light that fire. Teachers physically alter the development of a child's brain. And while we might not consider ourselves as brain changers, when we teach, we have an enormous impact on a student's neurobiological development. You see, teachers cause neurons, the brain cells predominantly involved in cognition, to sprout new branches called dendrites. This increases communication across a microscopic gap called a synapse. The synaptic leap of an electrical impulse between the axon of one neuron and the dendrite of the other is the physical basis of learning and memory. When a pathway of communication within a network of neurons is used repeatedly, it becomes increasingly efficient and, yes, the child has learned something, a huge moment of celebration. Considering that a brain has about 100 billion neurons, and we think between 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day, we can begin to appreciate what a busy and complex place a brain could be. Okay, this is where it gets really juicy. When a teacher provides a rich learning experience that plug the five senses into their students, vital sensory data rushes back to their jungle of neurons, reinforcing the information that they are learning creating even stronger patterns and networks. It's called enriching the brain. And the moment that information reaches the brain, the brain makes a chemical. And that chemical is called an emotion or a feeling. It's the emotional potion from that rich learning experience that begins to instruct their body chemically to understand what their young minds are learning. You see, we know that knowledge is for the mind and experience is for the body. And in that moment, teachers physically imprint knowledge throughout their students. Students go from little philosophers to initiates. They go from thinking to doing to being. Wow, this realization that our work alters the brain and body neurologically, biologically, and chemically, shaping the finite signature of a child's identity, offers a powerful foundation for rethinking one's philosophy of teaching. For the first time in history, folks, for the first time in history of formal schooling, teachers can begin to understand and act on this science of learning. It's an invitation to examine our practice, commit ourselves to drop what we now know is ineffective, and embrace promising new approaches that are brain compatible rather than brain antagonistic, such as using more active learning strategies, build rich learning environments, learning how to stimulate higher order thinking skills and implement effective and essential trauma-informed practices. Children in Saskatchewan spend well over 1,000 hours in school each year, and that's not including extracurricular activities before school, after school, and summer programming. Doesn't this present such a big golden opportunity? However, despite optimism from many who believe that neuroscience can make a meaningful contribution to education, there are some researchers out there that feel the two disciplines are simply way too different to ever be directly linked in a meaningful way, claiming it's a bridge too far. I admit, bridging research findings to the reality of the classroom is far easier said than done, especially when navigating our work in a funding climate that consists of limited resources and programming to even meet the basic needs of our diverse learners. But if we keep viewing education through the lens of the past, we will keep 
creating the past. We have to learn to unlearn and be defined by a vision of the future. In my opinion, that gap can be bridged, but only with a solid stepping stone of an investment in value from society. I know developing successful education practices will not be developed in a neuroimaging laboratory alone. You see, it's not just about brain mechanisms. It's about understanding the behaviors that the brain manifests in complex learning environments, like a classroom. The classroom is the laboratory. Understanding learning will require this cross-fertilization of ideas and paradigms, but this could lead to changes in both fields and an emergence of ideas that could revolutionize education, drawing on many innovative methods, techniques, and technologies. An education rewired. Bottom line, we need our kids ready to be able to face the inevitable challenges that are coming. And just like students need champions, so do teachers. Science has finally revealed the beautiful truth behind what teachers actually do. And I think it's time they receive credibility with the scientific world. This would lead to increased funding for schools, increased partnership and community involvement, better education options for all children and adults, and an elevation of our professional status where we have the time and resources to translate that good research into evidence-based everyday practices benefiting students and society. Now, before we are dismissed, don't you think you're getting away that easily, folks? I'm a teacher. We're in a large classroom. You're all going home with some homework. I want you to remember when you were a kid and you were going on a very special field trip. I bet you got up and dressed yourself well before your parents did that day. Why? It's because you knew something new and exciting was going to happen. And in that moment, joy was synchronized with learning, and you didn't even know it. There's potential to harvest that same feeling for every child in every classroom. It's just a matter of knowing how. So when you go home tonight, I challenge you to this. Envision a relationship between education and science that is not only reciprocal, but transformative for our children. Let's start the conversation. Thank you. <laughs>